Well, we're joined now from London by David Rothery, a professor of geosciences at the Open University. Welcome to our broadcast. Hello, Susan. How do you compare the quake in Ecuador to the most two recent ones across the Pacific in Japan's southernmost region? Well, it was bigger and it was also slightly deeper, which helps because when you compare earthquake magnitudes on the Richter scale, you have to consider how close to the surface the rupture begins. So the closer to the surface, the more damaging the, the shaking. This began in Ecuador about 20 kilometres down. The Japanese ones have been only about 10. But even so, it was more powerful at the source and uh, it was bigger earthquakes, so it shook for longer as well, which is why it's done more damage. David, what should Ecuadorians be expecting in terms of aftershocks and landslides in the coming hours and days? They have had a series of aftershocks. The last aftershock, bigger than magnitude 4, was about 12 hours ago, ago now. Uh, so it looks like the big aftershocks are mostly over, but the small aftershocks could still be felt by people uh, very close to where they're occurring. Uh, so it'll be disquieting to feel the ground trembling. It's unlikely that there are going to be more aftershocks strong enough to do more damage, but it could happen. Of course, the risk is for people trapped inside damaged buildings or rescuers trying to get to them, uh, a small amount of shaking c can bring catastrophe down upon your head. Um, landslides, probably not. It needs a big earthquake to set off a landslide. I think the landslides that were going to happen will have happened. It's just if it rains on recently disturbed ground, then you can get a fresh landslide. David, tell us, I mean, people looking at this think, well, over the last couple of days, we had these two quakes in Japan. Now we have this one in Ecuador. Both of these areas along this ring of fire in the Pacific, how could they not be related? Well, they're not directly related. I mean, you're right, it's a ring of fire all around the Pacific Ocean. There's ocean floor being pushed down below the continents. The, the Philippine plate's going down below Japan and the Nazca plate is going down below South America. Um, but the movement that's occurred 10,000 kilometres away across the Pacific in Japan isn't going to cause a corresponding movement underneath the edge of South America. You have to remember there are about 20 earthquakes of magnitude 7 or above every year somewhere in the world. We just happen to have, happen to have had two uh, within a couple of days of each other but were shallow enough and close enough to inhabited areas to cause damage. So it's a coincidence, um, but it's nothing more than that. Tell us, is it true, David, that 90% of the world's earthquakes um, occur in this region? And why is it for those of us who don't have a, a science background that this area is so prone to quakes? Well, I don't know about the figure 90%, but um, I, I will, I'm prepared to believe that because all around the Pacific, the floor of the ocean is being pushed below continents. There's a big difference between the, the rock, the outer skin of the earth below the oceans, and the rock that forms the continents. Continental crust is thicker and more buoyant. Oceanic crust is thinner and denser. So when the two meet, the, because we have plate tectonics, plates moving around on the surface of the earth, when you have continents against ocean, the ocean tends to get pushed down below the continent. And it's these subduction zone earthquakes which are the big ones. That's what caused the 2011 tsunami in Japan. It's what caused recent tsunamis and earthquakes up and down the coast of South America. Indirectly, it's what has caused the earthquakes in the south of Japan in the past few days. It's all related to the Pacific or the Philippine plate, in fact, going below Japan. So it's all linked up. But if you go to the Atlantic, um, but the Atlantic's an ocean that's widening and the continents are drifting apart and the ocean at the edge of the continents isn't being pushed below it. It's just they're moving away together. You've got convergence all around the Pacific. So that's why these big subduction zone earthquakes are concentrated all around the Pacific. Well, David Rothery, we certainly appreciate your time joining us live from London.